George, with Ventana Plant Sciences, there's the commercial line and the hobbyist line. Sure. Let's briefly go over those and the differences between the two. Yeah, no problem. So obviously we have the commercial line in front of us, so it's super easy to start with that. We've got the commercial bloom, the commercial grow, your commercial magnesium sulfate, your commercial magnesium nitrate, and then we have your additives over here, your commercial silicon, your commercial flavor, and then we've got your commercial micro. This is seven products. We have six on the retail line. So George, you're the formulation chemist of Ventana Plant Sciences, and you've formulated some products that have never seen the cannabis industry before. Yeah. Let's talk about those. I want to get the nutrient masterclass. So let's talk about chelation, precipitation, sure. and some really good, you know, usable, actionable data for growers. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, first of all, when you talk about nutrients, the goal here is to maximize nutrient uptake in the plants, right? I mean, when you're talking about nutrients, you want it in the plant, you don't want it going out of the solution, you know, to not be taken to the plant, you don't want it leaching out of the profile to be taken out. You know, our goal is to do that. We only put in exactly what you need. You know, our facility is, is food grade, you know, so we're coming from a food grade background. Our goal here is to take each one of these nutrients and figure out how can we get them to remain in solution. You know, when you put these nutrients in solution, you have what I call as an alphabet soup of minerals, right? You've all these positively charged minerals and negatively charged minerals. Some are chelated, some aren't chelated. So some are protected in a way that's good. They're going to remain in solution, you know, despite your pH is high or low and despite what other minerals might be in there, right? They've got this kind of organic complex that's covering them and, and encircling them. In fact, you can kind of, you know, see this force field and the color here, this red color that we have here. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, hey, George, is that like, is that a dye that you have in there? Did you put in there? And, and we don't, we don't use any dyes, of course, you know. And what you're seeing here is actually chemistry. And so that force field that you're seeing is you have the electron traveling from, in this case, it's the iron that you're seeing here primarily, or you have that electron traveling from the iron to that chelator mechanism, to the protectant and back again. And it's called the charge transfer band, right? So from a physics perspective, it's actually, we're, we're reflecting red and absorbing every other color is really what's going on. So it's, it's every color but red. So the chelator, it's like, you know, if something's chelated, you have the element and then the chelator is the right. force field, the actual force field. That's right, okay. that's right, yeah. And we're really trying to mimic what plants are doing naturally out in their environment when they're trying to acquire nutrients from the soil and bring them into solution. In this case, we just want them to remain in solution so the plant doesn't have to expend the energy of creating its own chelate and or trying to find that mineral that's precipitated in the soil. And it takes time and it takes luck to be able to do that from a root interception perspective, you know? So, you know, the technologies that we've hooked up here, like Flava, as an example, you know, these are designed, this product is designed to help keep your calcium magnesium in solution. How do we make sure that all these things are remaining in solution? All the nutrients to get them into the plant have to be in solution. And some of these compounds, where you take two elements and put them together are more soluble than others. Calcium nitrate is exceptionally soluble. Magnesium sulfate is very soluble. But calcium sulfate or calcium phosphate are very insoluble. They precipitate out of solution, they're not gonna be taken by the plant. So that's why we created Flava. So Flava is based on a polyamino acid that has an anionic negative charge. And so it will persist in the soil and it will grab on to this positively charged magnesium and calcium and prevent it from interaction with other, with other nutrients like sulfur or like phosphorus as an example. And so it's a really convenient way, you know, to have something that's gonna persist in the soil, you know, up to two or three months depending on the microbial load. And it's gonna keep these nutrients in the solution because as talked about before, up to 40% of your photosynthetic product the plant produces is released at the roots, at the rhizosphere, in, in an effort to modify either the pH, but also, and primarily for nutrient acquisition. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to save the plant energy and time, you know, of finding these nutrients and then solubilizing these precipitated nutrients that might be in the soil and maximizing nutri nutrient uptake. If we're able to maximize nutrient uptake into the plant, especially these specific physiological times, you know, we're gonna increase our flowering sites. We're gonna shift into more, you know, um, reproductive growth and less vegetative growth. And we've seen that in the trials we've done. You know, the flowers have come up, your shake weights come down, but also from a secondary metabolic process, I mean, that's where the name Flava was, was born, which is, you know, the VUH is volatile, unsaturated hydrocarbons, which is what a terpene is. So in our trials, you know, we're showing not only an increase in your THC or, or CBD content, you know, your general cannabinoids, but also for your terpenes. So with the product Flava, you know, this is a product that not only is part of the Ventana Plant Science nutrient line, but it seems like 
you could use it with any nutrient line and it would help ensure that the other components of other nutrient lines get absorbed to a plant better. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we, we envision this. I mean, great, it, it, you know, it, it's wonderful to walk into a, a facility, you know, and say, hey, you know, use our nutrient program and for them to quit, you know, right off the bat and say, oh, absolutely, we're gonna change everything we're doing overnight. You know, I think for me, you know, it's, it's a lot easier to walk in and say, hey, we wanna add one additive and we wanna demonstrate why you need this additive. And I think a lot of facilities are going over to water soluble nutrition, you know, and, and you know, I came from the nursery greenhouse industry years ago, I definitely get it. But, you know, an additive like this will make a huge difference. Plants are not, you know, plant roots are not like a PVC pipe where, where you just, you know, here's your opening, there's your water and nutrients is getting sucked in. I mean, there are specific uptake sites at the roots that will take up certain nutrients. And some of these nutrients take up at the same uptake site. So like manganese and iron is a good example of that, where, you know, it's like a two lane highway and it's going down to one. And so if you've got a lot of iron, you know, and very little manganese, it's gonna be hard for manganese to get into the plant, as an example. You know, nutrient balance is another part of this program. It should be a part of anybody's program, you know, when we're, when we're doing it. George and I, the science guy, why don't we uh, play with some uh, elements? That sounds great to me. Let's do it. So this one's going to get flavor, and this one is not gonna get flavor. So what we'll do is we'll take, uh, take our grow solution here, okay? Kind of mix that in there. I always like to see a sheen. Of, of the nutrients. There's a shine when everything's in solution, right? And how it catches your eye. You know, theoretically, um, since we have an ionic uh, bond between magnesium and sulfur, again, this is an alphabet soup now. You've got manganese plus two floating around in there, and you've got SO4 minus two floating around in there, right? And so they could interact with other things. Magnesium could turn into magnesium phosphate. Okay, it doesn't as readily as calcium and, and, and we'll show that, but um, you know, that's a risk. But in this case here, it still passes the test. It still looks clear. So finally, you know, calcium nitrate, right? Yeah. Now, when we add this in, calcium really likes phosphorus and it really likes sulfur. Meaning this Ca plus two and this NO3 minus two, again, it's just like, like I said, it's an alphabet soup of stuff. So when you put this in here, you know, without the flavor, you know, you're going to have this start to form immediately. Even in dilution, you know, even, you know, the grain, we're not mixing this in concentration, but even in dilution, you're gonna have this thing mix in and you're gonna to start to create calcium phosphate and you're gonna to start to create calcium sulfate, which are both insoluble. So they're gonna to start to come out and it's gonna be kind of this cloudy solution. We'll turn our eyes toward this other one. Now, this one does not have flavor in it. This would be more of a standard mineral program that says, hey, you know, I'm here to save some money. I know what I'm doing. I'm growing crops forever. We're just gonna use a mineral fertilizer, okay. no big deal, okay? So we'll do, again, magnesium sulfate next. Mix that in, you know, and finally, what we'll do is we'll mix in this calcium nitrate. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not something, again, in dilution like this, it's not something that's going to um, precipitate out violently. In concentration, you would see that. I mean, immediately when you poured it in, you'd, you'd see this precipitate form. You know, and right. by precipitate form, let's describe that to, yeah, yeah. to cal you know, the grower out there. What, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see calcium phosphate, and even so, you can see it clouding up right now. Um, I don't know if you, if you can see that, yeah. but you're gonna see calcium phosphate form, and you're gonna see calcium sulfate form. We wanna walk over here and look over top, look, look over here and look here. Yeah. You can see down at the bottom there, you can't see down at the bottom here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is more like what I would call a cranberry juice. And then- um, This is like V8. Yeah, yeah. What's happening is this polymer, this helical polymer, this anionic negatively charged, is adsorbing that calcium and that magnesium and, and preventing it from precipitating with that phosphorus and with that sulfur. I mean, it, boom, right there. And you saw how short that took? As soon as it entered a solution, practically. And so when you think about, hey, no big deal, brother. These things are separate, they're in concentrate, they're gonna go through my irrigation line, and that only takes 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Well, boom, it's already formed. And this is just in dilution. This isn't even concentration. So, you know, these two, and, and really commercial microbes as well. We haven't talked about commercial microbes. It's kind of your once a week compost tea in a, in a 
in a dry form. We've lyophilized the bacteria. We've got a nice mycorrhizae in there. You know, so, you know, if you guys want to use it once a week when you're watering, we got a lot of guys that do, they love it. Um, I've worked with silicon a lot in my time, um, certainly in this industry, but also outside of this industry. You know, silicon is also a really difficult nutrient to work with and formulate with. We're interested in silicon that's going to be in solution and going to be available to the plant and going to be taken up into the plant because we know it's got to be in solution. And to do that, it has to be in the form of mono or orthosilicic acid, okay? Okay. So, you know, our quest, our quest when we talk about silicon was how do we create something that's silicic acid based, stable, and doesn't have a pH that's sky high? You know, this looks like a solution. It's not, it's a dispersion, meaning that this polymer is actually out of solution, it's dispersed. Okay, and but it's so small. They're they're about 20 nanometers on size uh, on average. That's smaller than a st the diameter of a small a stomatal pore. So very small. We can't see it. It looks like a solution to us. So we've created something that's stable, goes into solution readily, mixes well uh, with other nutritional programs, um, and and is concentrated. And so it's nano emulsified, basically. That's exactly right. And that's so exactly that right. means, you know, it's probably good for foliar because you said it's smaller oh, than the stomata pore. Absolutely. So this absolutely. can get absorbed yeah. right through the stomata of the plant. Yeah, that's exactly right. Thank you today for the Nutrient Masterclass. Um, I definitely am walking out of this room a lot smarter than I came in. So <laughs> well, Appreciate that, buddy. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. Like I said, any day in the lab is a good day. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, George. Thank you.